Good morning, church. We have had some technical difficulties on Sunday morning, and this morning when I woke up, God just spoke in my heart. He wanted me to record it. He said, Bruce, you have the abilities to record it, record the message again, and get it out to the church, because people want to hear this, and they've been following along. And so this morning, I'm just coming to the chapel. I'm here all alone, and I'm just recording the message so that we can together have this message. Well, we have been talking for the last five weeks or so on a topic of what on earth am I here for? What am I here for? Why am I here? Why am I alive? Well, the first week we talk, I talked on that you matter to God. That you matter so much that he chose you and I to live this time. That right now is when he chose you and I to live. And that no matter what else is happening and no matter what else is going on in our lives, he loves you and he loves me and he chose us for this time. The second week we talked on that we were planned for God's pleasure. The Bible uses the word worship here. And worship just doesn't mean that we just sing songs to the Lord. It also means that we pray to him. It also means that we read his word together and study his word. We get it. it also means that we come together as a group and we worship God. We spend time talking about God and how he is inflected in our lives. When we were away, Cheryl and I and Glenn and Sarah, we had the opportunity to really worship God together. We never sang one song together. But what we talked about was God's beauty. What we talked about is how God created these things and how unique he's created this world and how this world is so important. I laugh, we, we, every time we sat and ate a meal together, no one touched their food until someone prayed. We wanted to make sure that we prayed together. And it got funny how we were just waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay, who's it gonna be? And then we finally, someone would say, okay, it's my turn. Or, or well, whose turn is it? And we would pray and we would, and God wants us to worship him in all that we do. He wants us to honor everything that we do with him. Next, Pastor Rod, he talked about that we were formed for God's family. That we are important enough to God that he adopted you and I into his family. I love the fact that this Bible uses the word fellowship. I, I have a sister who is adopted. She's a younger sister. She's about five and a bit years younger than me. And uh, uh, I love the fact that I can still remember I was five years old when my mom and dad brought her home. See, my mom was never pregnant. Never talked about, we, I, they, they may have talked about adoption, but five years old, really didn't think anything of this. Other than this one day, my grandmother came over and my mom and dad said, we were leaving and we were gonna bring back and bring home your sister. Wow, we had getting a sister. And, and I remember sitting with my grandmother and my two brothers and we were sitting there and about two hours later, um, my mom and dad come, my grandma got us to sit still and quiet on the couch. And my mom and dad walked in the door holding a baby. And I remember us boys were together and my mom and dad and I were beside my grandmother and they plopped the baby in my arms beside my grandma and said, here is your sister, guys. And I had a sister. And, I, and now we're over 50 something years now my sister has been in our lives and, and she's now gone off to seek her biological family. Um, and her reasonings behind going and seeking is, is that every time she goes to the doctors, the doctor says, is there anything of this history of whatever medical is going on in life? Is there any history of cancer? Is there any history of diabetes? Is there any history of this in your family? And my sister consistently says, no, I don't know. I'm adopted. And so because of that, she's not, she hasn't gone into the, to have the biological. But God says that we are adopted in. I love the fact that my sister, she has a biological half-brother and that he has been a famous hockey player. Because of that, she has said to me, she said, it don't matter that he, that he is famous and he played hockey for the Vancouver Canucks and a few other teams. To her, that didn't matter. She said, what matters to me, Bruce, is that you're my brother. And then she says to me, and I want to make sure that you as family know what's going on. And she consistently lets me know and consistently calls me and says, hey, I just had another talk with my, my biological dad and tells me what happened. See, she wants to know that she, although that was her dad, her now her family is us. And I love the fact that she showed me a letter that she sent to the biological dad. She said, I'm not looking for a dad or a mom. 
I have parents who loved me and did the best they could for me and showed me great things. You see, God, when we're adopted into his family, that's the same thing God wants to do for us. He wants to show you some great things. He wants to look after you well. He wants to do amazing things for us. And so when we're adopted in, he wants us to know that he wants to give us many things and bless us. Well, last week we were blessed. I hope you were blessed last week with Pastor Olivia. I love the fact that she came and talked on that we were created to become like Christ. That you and I are, be, are, are to have our character be changed to become like Jesus. I love the fact that the Bible talks about this being that we are to be disciples of Jesus. That Jesus is to disciple you and I and that we are to be discipled together. Well, that's what we've talked about in the last five weeks. And so I got a couple more weeks for us to go in this one on earth that we're here for to really shape us into what God has molded you and I to be. So this week, we're going to talk on that you were shaped to serve God. That you and I are shaped to serve God. And the Bible uses this word. The word that the Bible uses for this is it uses ministry. See, as soon as I use that word ministry, I know how you guys think that I do. Yeah, I, I know this. When, when pastors used to talk about that, it's not necessarily for me. I'm not shaped for ministry. I'm shaped for doing some service around here. I'm shaped to helping out here. I'm shaped to doing things. But I'm not shaped for that. That's what pastors do. That's why we pay pastors. They're to do ministry. Oh, there's, there's those ones who are called to go on missions fields, go to Africa and Pakistan, and Cambodia, and all places of, of the world, but not me. Well, I love this, what the Bible says. In 2 Timothy 1.9, it says, It is he who saved us and chose us for his holy work. I love this scripture, and, and I love this scripture so much, I, I, I just going to read this again so that you understand. It says, It is he who saved us. And if it is he who saved us, that means it's Jesus Christ who saved us. It's not a program of Alpha or Celebrate Recovery or other things that we did that saved us. It is He who saved us. That means it is Jesus Christ who saved you and I. That no matter what we do, we can do a lot of works, but it is still Jesus who saved us. And then I love the fact, and chose us for His holy works. He's chosen you and I for works. He calls us to salvation, and then He tells us that we were called for service. I love the fact that God tells us that even before we were born, he knew what he wished for you and I to do. Before we were born, he knows what we are on. When we studied Ephesians, Ephesians 2.10, it said that we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for you and I to do, for us to do. If you got your Bible, just underline that word, advance. Because that word advance means a lot to us. It means that no matter what, in advance, that we are not an accident. God chose you and I to be here at this time. That we have purpose in life. And that purpose in life is, is that he has a purpose for you and I. And that God has work for you and I. He has work that he's chosen because he says in advance that he's not, when he speaks his words, he's truthful. He says that, that that word advance means that we were designed to make a difference. That you and I are designed to make a difference because he has work that he's prepared for you and I. And that he also, that me and you are made for ministry. Well, you know, it, it doesn't matter how long we live in this world. We can live 70, 80, 90, 100 years. It doesn't matter how long we live. What matters is, is how we live that life. When I say that, I love the fact that there's a lady that from my old church who just passed away. She was a missionary. And I, I, I'm really sad to say I don't know how long she was a missionary. Somewhere it's between 40 and 50 years she was in Africa. She came out of the old tabernacle church in Vancouver and they, they moved to, to Caribou Road where I come from. And what they, this is is that they were off and her name was Helen Hildebrand. She was in her 90s. I love the fact that she was on the missions field for years. And when she came back, her and her husband and her family, I love the fact that they just continued to serve God. They, our man, every day came to the church and putted around and did things to make sure the church was in right place 
and in good shape for us when we came on Sunday mornings. He would fix anything. He would see things and say, I need to fix this, and he would do it. Helen was a lady that just would bring you down and let you sit with her and talk with her, and you could talk with her, and she would just love on you. You could just feel the love out of this lady. I, 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 I just love that Cheryl and I used to go, and we used to go and have lunch with them after church on Sundays. And we, we would just go and sit and talk. And, and it was just, they were more interested in what was happening in our life than to tell us what was going on in their life. They would consistently ask us questions. So what's happening here, Bruce? Or Cheryl, what are you doing? How are you feeling about this, Cheryl? Where are you going? So consistently, it was more important for us to tell, for them, to, to us to tell them what was happening in our life than for them to tell us. Well, the good news here, and there is some good news, that God just didn't make you for ministry or for service. But he's given us the abilities and the strength to do what he's called us to do. I love the fact that God has given you whatever it takes, whatever it is, the strength and the ability to do it. I love this in the Bible says, it says in Job 10, 8, it says, your hands shaped me and made me. I love that word shape. He, he shaped you and I. Now, Celebrate Recovery, one of the things I do love about Celebrate Recovery is they, they use an acrostic to help us understand some of the words and some of the meanings and some of the direction that God had. And if God has shaped you, then we're going to use that word shape, and I'm going to use an acrostic this morning very quickly. The S stands for spiritual gifts. God has given you and I spiritual gifts. Unique spiritual gifts that are for us to be used for his glory. He has these so that we know that we got these spiritual gifts. He has said here, and every one of us have different spiritual gifts. Every one of us have spiritual gifts that we're going to be using to further his kingdom. Every one of us know that the spiritual gifts that he's given us, he has shown us that this is what he wants to bless you and I with. I love this. The H stands for he's given you and I a heart. A heart for the lost. And not just any loss, a particular loss. Maybe it's for your family. Maybe it's for friends. Maybe it's for others. I love the fact that, that on, sun, on, Saturday, on Fridays, this church prays. And, and they pray over this pot. They have the heart for the lost. See, they're praying. There's names. There's hundreds, hundreds of names in here. And, and I'd actually like them to go through it one day and see how many of those names are no longer needing to be in there to be prayed for because they've already been saved. We need to know that they have the heart for the lost. And they have said, if you have family members who are not saved, put their name in here because they're going to pray over that pot. They're going to pray over the names. They have the heart for the lost. The A stands for abilities. You have been given unique abilities. Not everyone can worship and lead worship. Not everyone can preach a message. Not everyone, but God has called you and given you unique abilities to do something. He's called you to do something. The P, it stands for personality. He's given you the unique personality. No, I know I don't have the personality to meet every single one person. And that I don't have the personality that will, will be attractive to everyone. But I do know this, that you have a personality that will attract someone. That God's given you a unique personality. And that personality is that he's using for you to use to serve. And then the E stands for experiences. He's given each and every one of us life experiences. He's given us life experiences so that we can benefit and go further and show and bless people. You know, I... In this last month, I have been asked to come to Surrey Christian School. And I have been asked to, to work with some of the kids in the school. They, they are doing a Christmas play and a Christmas project in there. They, what they want to do is they want to bless and try to, figure, try to see if they can make a difference with the homeless. And the teacher there knows my personal story. She knows that at a time in my life, I was homeless, that I lived on the streets. And so she asked if I would come and share my story with the class. 
Not just one class, but multiple classes. I love the fact that she said, we only want you to share about 15 minutes. And then we want to give the kids an opportunity to ask you questions. And so it was great. We stopped. I shared with them. Um, they all wanted to know the whole story of, of where I am. And they didn't ask questions about where I'm at. But I want to tell you, there was one young girl. Grade 7. And she said, when you were living on the streets, how did you feel? Now, I immediately would go to when I just first went on to the streets, live on the streets. I felt safe. I felt okay. I felt like I was all right. But then there was a time when that safe and okay left. And there was times when I felt useless, like garbage. Like nobody cared who I was. That I was just a waste of breath. And I had people who, who would tell me that on the streets over and over and over again. And I would share, and I shared that with them, that, that that's how I had felt. And I, I love the fact that that young girl said, can I ask a second question? And, and I said, yes, please. And, and I had gotten emotional, and I didn't expect that emotion to come out of me when she had asked me that question. And then she said to me, she said, how can we make a difference to someone who feels like that? And I sat there, Stunned. How, how does this child who is 12 or 13 years old realizing that she wants to make a difference in someone's life? And I said, you know, I know that some of them are there and they're out, they're out, they're panhandling and they're after your money. They're after your dollars in your pocket. They want you to give them money. And some are after drugs and some are after alcohol. But I'll tell you this. If you don't give them money, and you don't give them food, but if you recognize who they are, you show that they're still a human being, that they're still loved, that they are alive and they're not garbage. You see, I, I remember 17 years old. Now I have been living on the streets for a while, and I have been doing a lot of stuff. See, this is part of my experience. And I went to what I would call a soup kitchen, a place where they got soup and a sandwich. And this gentleman came, and I'm sitting in a chair, and I'm eating my soup and my sandwich. And I probably haven't eaten for probably four or five days. I was really hungry, and I was gobbling it up. And I love the fact that this man came and put his hand on my shoulder. He said, young man, can I pray for you? Now, I just got nervous. No one's ever asked me. They could pray for me. I didn't know what he was going to ask me to do. He was going to ask me to stand on a chair and he was going to yell and make a spectacle on me. And I said, yeah, sure. And put my head down. He said, no, no, no. He said, I just need to know your name. You need to know my name. I told him my name was Bruce. And he, and he, he said, Bruce, I'm going to go and pray that Jesus comes to you. Now I want to tell you, many nights sleeping on the streets, I thought about this God. Who is this God that this guy prayed about? You never know how impactful you can be by just asking someone your name. See, my experience was is that I knew how important it is that someone recognized who I am. And that personal experience is, is that I needed to know that that's what God had for me. And God had that for you and I. And so when God shapes us, he gives us spiritual gifts. He gives us a heart for the people that he has us to be going. He has given us the abilities to do it. He gives us the personality to reach those people. He's given us the heart to reach. And then he's given us those life experiences so that we have compassion for those ones that he has given us to do. That shape that he has given you and I is he's giving it us so that we can go and serve. I want to tell you that the good news is, is that he's given you that. I want to tell you that there's some bad news here. And it's very easy, it's bad news. That these experiences, these shapes that God has given you and I, are not for our benefit. 
They're not for us to sit back and be relaxed and wait. These gifts are for giving to us to serve others. Bible says in 1 Peter 4.10, says each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. We're called to serve others. That's the fourth purpose in what we're going through here is that we are called to serve others by serving God through serving others. I want us to, you to know that no matter what is going on, you cannot serve an invisible God, but you can serve others. I love the fact that in Matthew it talks about that Jesus was telling him, when, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. When I was tired, you gave me a place to sleep. When I, and, and he went on and on about those. And then the, his disciples said, Jesus, when, when did we do these things for you? And I love this. He uses these words. He uses, whenever you did this for the least of my people, you did it for me. How we serve an invisible God is by doing it for others. I love the fact that that's what he calls us to do. He calls us to serve like others. You know, when we went away, and we, we were blessed, very blessed, by Glenn and Sarah, we, Cheryl and I made sure, we, both of us, Cheryl and I said, we, many nights I went to bed just in tears of joy of what God has been doing in our lives and how he blessed us with this. And we let Glenn and Sarah know this. And, and when we got there, one of the things Glenn said to us, he said, hey, listen, I love cooking breakfast. I love cooking breakfast. I, and we said, oh, okay. We, and, but before we could really say anything, he said, oh, no, well, I'll be doing eggs and bacon. And, and, and what else do you like? Because I just want to make breakfast for us. And, and Cheryl and I didn't have the heart to say to him, well, Breakfast normally is a very small meal, yogurt, toast. I normally don't eat breakfast until, I, until 12 o'clock. I normally don't eat until around noon every day. And I, I, and I didn't, we didn't have the heart because he said, I just love doing this and I want to do this. And so every morning at 8 o'clock, we would go to their room and he would have breakfast all laid out for us. Every single day. He knew that even though he's the one who blessed us and said, here, come to my resort that I have shares in, that you can be blessed. I costed me money, but come and do this for me. He didn't come and say, now you have to serve me. He said, no, 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 no. Hey, I want to serve you. I want to continue to bless you. I love the fact that Glenn knew that his experiences and his shape, that's what he needed to do. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 20, 28, and said, your attitude must be like my own. For I did not come to serve, but to serve. See here, the word attitude is very important. That word attitude means that that's the attitude that Jesus wants us to have. He wants us to have his attitude. You see, last week, if we were to become like Jesus, then here are some of his characters that he wants us to be like. He has this that he wants us to be like him. He wants us to have an attitude of him. He wants us to be able to walk like he walks. He wants us to have it. But he tells us, he gives us four characteristics that he has, four attitudes that he has that he wants you and I to live by. If we're going to serve like Jesus and we're going to serve others like Jesus, then he tells us there is four characteristics that you and I need to be. He says, first, to serve like Jesus means being available. Being available. Being available is important because if we're not available, God can't use you and I. He can't use us. I love this. He says in Matthew 20, 30 to 32, it says, two blind men shouted, Lord, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. I love the fact that Jesus, and I didn't look up, and I, and I should have looked up, but even today I should have looked it up, where Jesus was going. But Jesus was walking through a crowd with a crowd of people, and there was some ruckus and some noise. And these two blind men who were out there begging most likely for money, looking for some help, said to somebody, passed by, what's going on? And they said, oh, Jesus of Nazareth, this is here. They immediately knew who he was. Two blind men didn't know if he was right in front of them or if he was a block away. But what they knew is, is that he was close. And how they didn't show Jesus, 
He shouted, Lord, Lord, have mercy on us. I love the fact they're blind. They're over here. Jesus could have been right in front of them. But you see, what Jesus said is, is he didn't say, hey, I'm too busy. I'm on my way to feed the 5,000. Or, or maybe, maybe, I'm on my way to raise Nazareth, Lazarus from the grave. Or maybe I'm on my way to see the young girl who, who is sick and I'm raising her up. Maybe, maybe I'm on my way to the healing waters where the man has been sitting for 35 years and I'm going to ask him if he wants to get well. Maybe I'm, I'm on my way to do something. Jesus is on his way. But when he hears these men, you see this, he made himself available to them. He stopped and said, what do you want me to do for you? You see, when we call on Jesus, he asks us, what do you want me to do for you? We need to know what he, we want him to do for us. He wants us to know that we need to be available. Being available is important to him. Being available means God can use you wherever you are, whatever is going on in your life. He can use you for miracles right now, right now. You know, I, I want to ask you in this last week, was there an opportunity for you to help someone? To talk to someone, to listen to someone, but we've been too busy in the world to do it. Now I did an illustration yesterday with Cheryl, and I had asked Cheryl to come up, and I don't have Cheryl here with me. I'm actually I'm not here by myself. And what I did was Cheryl was showed me one day how I was not available, even though I thought I was available. And what it was, was one Sunday morning I was at church and I was, I was busy, I was asked to do something. I don't know what I was asked to do, and I don't remember why I was so busy, but I was busy running doing something. I was either going to do an errand for the pastor, or I was going to make sure communion was ready. I was going to do something. I was busy making sure something was happening. And as I was, I seen someone, and, and I went and I grabbed their hand and I said, Hi, Cheryl, great to see you, and how are you? And as I walked by her, and as I walked by her, I didn't give them an opportunity to stop. I didn't stop to hear. See, I went away thinking, hey, I'm good. I, I said hello. I made, greeted them. I asked them how they were. But then Cheryl said, Bruce, when you just walked by, you dismissed anything that you had done. You were not available. She told me I needed to put on my hand, stop, and say, hi, how are you? And listen to what they have for me. I want to ask you, are we too busy or are we able to stop and help? Proverbs 3.28 says, Never tell your neighbor to wait until tomorrow if you can help them now. Make ourselves available. The second one, to serve like Jesus, means being grateful. Being grateful. John 11.41-42 says, Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you. That you have heard me, I know that you always hear me, but I say this for the benefit of the people standing here. See, when Jesus prayed to the Father, he was always grateful for what he was doing. He was always grateful for the changes and the miracles and the things that he was given and the abilities. He never grumbled and complained about doing what he had to do. He was always grateful. He was even grateful even the day that he was dying for us because he knew that he was doing the works that he was called for. In 1 Timothy 1.12, it says, I thank Jesus Christ our Lord who gave me the strength because he trusted me and gave me this work of serving him. See, Paul had the attitude of gratitude. No matter where Paul was, no matter what was happening in him, he was always grateful to be able to serve. Even when he was put in prison, he was grateful because he was still able to serve Jesus. Are we grateful for even the circumstances that we are in? If even when it's tough and we're in chains and we're closed off, are we grateful for God for putting us where we are so that we can serve him? Are we grateful to be able to serve the Lord? Psalms 102 says, serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serving like Jesus means being faithful. Means being faithful. 
Faithful means continuing when we're just still feeling defeated. Being faithful means when no one's watching us, we're still being faithful. Being faithful means that we don't quit in the middle of the work. We continue on. Uh, John 17, 4 says, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work that you gave me to do. Jesus was glorifying the Father, completing the work that he had to do. And that completion was to die on the cross for you and I. Not just to die on the cross for us, but also to raise from the dead so that we can see that the grave doesn't even want to keep us down. That his work wasn't completed until his resurrection was done. And we needed to know that when we're in that place, when we're feeling defeated and we're feeling lost, that our work isn't done yet, even though it's tough. 2011, Cheryl and I had the blessings of going to Mongolia. The church sent us there for over three weeks. We were going to be there for three weeks in a foreign country. This was the very first missions trip that Cheryl and I went and served together. Now, on this missions trip, there was a lot of things that had happened. There were some things that went on. One was is that our team that we went with, they would go, four of them would say, hey, we're going to go and pray. And we say, oh, okay, we'll come with you. No, 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 it doesn't concern you. I would go, how does prayer not concern us? But okay, so we kept getting pushed over to the side. And then this one day, we were doing some things and I had fallen in a hole. But God blessed me that I didn't go all the way down because it was 12 feet down in the hole. And then the bottom of the hole, there was spikes at least a foot and a half high sticking straight up rebar. And if I would have went down, I would have landed on them and I would not be here today. I know that my heart of hearts, God saved me for the, and looked after me that day. But what happened was, is that a day or two later, I had, first I thought I broke my ankle. Second, well, it wasn't a broken ankle, it was a sprained ankle. And my ankle had swollen up, but I was blessed, I was okay. I was able to find ice in Mongolia, you cannot find ice. I was able to get some ice and get it on my ankle, help with the swelling. Later on, I would find that I, I would go and speak at one of the largest Christian churches in the country. I was blessed and was able to speak at this church. And, and I was speaking at this church and with the people. And then after it was over, I was on the way out the door. And I had my, my interpreter. I had a young lady that I was walking with and doing. And she was bringing me to a lot of places to go and serve. And, and I had a couple of other missionaries there. And, and we get out of the street. And out of the blue, this man starts just pounding my chest. And screaming Mongolian at me. I don't have a clue what he said, but he hit me and I'd fall back. Now, I didn't fall on the ground, but I kept on my feet, but I kept saying, hey, hold, 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 hold. And I would come back forward and he would boom me again. Cheryl would yell at me, Bruce, get out of there. I, I said, where am I gonna go? And I'm gonna turn my back on this guy. And my interpreter's screaming at him. My, the other ladies, they're all screaming at him, but he's screaming at them. And then he turns to me and just plows me. And as that's all going on, it's all happening. I'm, I'm not sure what's happening, but I get this word from God. Stand firm. Okay, God, I just spoke about your grace, and now you're telling me to stand firm. And the guy came and he, and I didn't go back. I stood firm. Now, at the moment I stood firm, I seen my interpreter run like a scared girl back to the church. I said, I'm on my own here now. And I turned to the fellow, and when I had the fellow in front of me, as I stood, I didn't, his eyes went big, and his hands and fists came up. And I said, okay, Lord, this is what's going to happen. I'm, I'm going to have to wrestle with this guy, but Lord, I'm going to do it with your glory. I, okay, God, give me the strength. And as I'm just, I'm, I'm now, okay, guy, like, we're going to do what needs to be done. Four men come out and tackle this guy. The pastor comes running out, grabs me, says, come, 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 pastor. He says, gets, calls the cap, he, he goes, whoof, me and a cap, whoof. I'm gone. You see, I didn't know what was happening, but what I did know is, is that how it was affecting my wife. My wife got so affected with it that she didn't even want to leave the house anymore. This one night we went to bed and she was telling me, she said, Bruce, I, I, just, I just want to go home. I don't feel safe. I am scared. I said, okay, then tomorrow we will just spend time together and we will stay here. And we will pray together. We will spend time together. We will just seek God today. And she says, okay, thank you. And, and thank you for not forcing me to go outside today. And so we spent the day. When we got up that morning, the team, oh, Bruce, you're going to go here, 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 and here. And I said, no, we're not. Cut. This is what's going on. 
Cheryl is feeling unsafe, and, and so because of that, I'm not leaving the home today. We're going to serve each other. And they, they did some other things, and I had seen some emails that they sent off that we were not being fully servant and listening to what they want us to do, and this may have been a mistake that would bring in us, blah, blah, blah. There was a whole bunch of garbage. But what I didn't know is, is this was, is that Cheryl and I stood up and prayed. What we didn't know is that there was a movement going on that was happening in that city that we were in that to get rid of all the foreigners out of the country, that no matter who you were, if you were a foreigner in their country, they wanted you out of their country. They wanted the foreigners gone because they thought the foreigners were ruining their country. What I didn't know is, is that God had called me and I needed to be faithful to the service that he had called us. And through that day, Cheryl eventually said, yeah, let's go. I asked her, so are you willing to go for a walk? And she said, yes, under one condition. That the moment I felt, she felt scared that I would bring her home and back. And I promised her I would. And we, went back. And we actually ended up walking uh, somewhere between four and eight hours that day. We just went and walked. And we just spent some time. And she felt good by the end of the day. She felt like we could do the works, and at the end of the day, we were able to start and to do the things that God had called us to do. See, even in the middle of hard works, we knew we were called to do some works, and we needed to do that works, and we were able to do some amazing things there. We needed to stay faithful. We needed to stay strong, knowing that Jesus, no matter how big or how small the work that he had for us, we had to stay faithful in doing what we were doing. We had to stay strong in all that we did. And we knew that Jesus wanted us to do this. I want us to talk, I want to talk about one fellow here, and that is Billy Graham. I read the story of Billy Graham not long ago, and, and, and what I liked about Billy Graham's story was the beginning of how he accepted Jesus Christ. And what I liked about this is that Billy Graham, until he accepted Jesus Christ, was just like you and I. Just a normal person. And, and he had heard of this rally going on, and he went with his friend. To the service. When they had got to the service, when they walked in, they, they couldn't see any seats. They thought the place was too full for them. And they had turned to leave. But what I liked was this man whose job was to be the usher. He was faithful in the service that God had given him. He was the usher, and he knew he could find some seats for these two young men. He knew that no matter what service or where it is, there's always room in the front row for someone in he had brought Billy Graham and his friend right to the front row. And in amongst that service and in amongst that time, that man did an altar call. The pastor who was running it, he did an altar call and Billy Graham came up and accepted Jesus Christ. And when the rest is history, we know the works that he had done. But what I found very unique about that story is, is that not one person knew who the usher was. No one knows who his name is. We don't have a clue of who he was. What we do know is, is that he stopped Billy Graham from leaving that service, and he had the opportunity to have and accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. If he didn't do that little job, Billy Graham's service may not have been as what it was. We don't know who we're doing it for and what they're going to be down the road. That man who put his hand on my shoulder when I'm at a soup kitchen and said, can I pray for you, did not know that later in my life I would be a pastor, that I would be preaching God's word, that I would be walking. But what I would like to know, I'm going to say this, I believe in heaven I will have an opportunity to say hi to that man. What I do believe is, is this much, is, is that that man had an impact Maybe small, but he planted a seed that was later watered and grew to where I am today. And same with Billy Graham, that man had a very insignificant job and was able to have a large impact in the kingdom of God. We need to be faithful, no matter how big or how small, we need to be faithful. The last one I want to talk about here is generosity. We need to be generous. To serve like Jesus means being generous. 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, You are familiar with the generosity of our master, Jesus Christ. Rich as he was, he gave it all away for us. In one stroke, he became poor and we became rich. See, Jesus came to earth from heaven. He didn't need to leave heaven. He was already in glory. But he left it all. To come here to die a 
on the earth for you and I. Romans 3, 24 says, out of sheer generosity, God put us in right standing with himself. A pure gift. He got us out of the mess that we were in and restored us to where he always wanted us to be. And he did it by the means of Jesus Christ. See, God, out of his generosity, out of his love, put us in right standings. And I love this. And he restored us out of the mess that we are in to the place he always wanted you and I to be. He did this by the means of Jesus Christ. I love the fact that he was generous. I want to ask you, are you being generous with what you have? And some people right away will start thinking that's money. And some of us, it is money. But some of us, it's with time. Some of us, it is with our efforts. Some of us, with the gifts and the spiritual gifts, the shape that God has given you and I, are we using that to further God's kingdom? Are we using that for what God has called us to do? Or are we just going to stand back and let others be generous? And I'm not going to do what I need. Being generous was that man who was the usher at Billy, that, that first event that Billy Graham went to that he accepted Jesus Christ on. That man, that was, man was being generous by giving up his time and serving and not worrying about him having a seat in the facilities. He was worried about serving. We have people here who are generous that, that today Keith is on the sound because our Bruce, our normal sound guy, wasn't well this morning. He wanted to be here, but he wasn't well enough to come here. So Keith, last night at 9 o'clock, we got text messages that he wasn't going to be. Can we look after sound? Keith, being generous of his time, is here to look after it. Nikki, who is on our sound, we were not able to, we, we scrambled for 40 minutes trying to get our YouTube going. Not nothing happening, but she still gave her time and efforts and thankful for it. Are we being generous with what God's given us, with the abilities that he has given us? And are we looking and using those to serve his kingdom? I want to ask you those four abilities of, that God has given us. Those four attributes of an attitude that he has asked us to have. But we are to be and have an attitude. I want to ask you, are you available as Jesus was available? That was an attitude that he had. He made himself available. Jesus was grateful. He was grateful for the Father. He was grateful for all that he had. He always was grateful for everything he had. Are you grateful for what you are and what you were given? I love the fact that Paul said he thanks Jesus Christ for giving him and trusting him in the service that he has. Are you in that place? I want to ask you, are you there? Are you faithful for what it is? Are you faithful for what he's given you? Even if it was small, are we still faithful knowing that God has asked you to do this? And are you willing to do it? And are you generous? Are you generous with your time and your money? Are you generous this morning? That being said, I want to ask you this morning, I want to ask you very strongly. There is a prayer I want to ask you this morning to do. I want to ask you this morning, you online, if, if you would have this time, of, of just stopping and thinking. And I want to ask you, I want to ask you to say a prayer with me this morning. Knowing the shape that God has given me, the spiritual gifts, the heart, the abilities, the personality and the experience of my life, the shape that he has made me. I want to ask you, are you willing to ask God and prayer a prayer with me? It is three words. And if you are at home and you are willing, I'm going to be bold and say, stand with me today. If you are at home and you're sitting at your desk, stand at your desk. If you are at, at your office, stand in your office, if you, wherever you are. But I would ask you to say these, this prayer and say this prayer out loud. There's three words. I'm going to say these three words and then we will say them together. And the three words are, Jesus, use me. That doesn't tell him where you want him to use him. It doesn't say how you want him to use him. It just says, I want to be available. I want to have an attitude like Jesus. I want to be available. I want to be grateful. I want to be faithful. I want to be generous. And I'm just going to say, Jesus, use me. This morning, will you say that prayer with me? Jesus, use me. Come on, we're just going to say it one more time. Jesus, use me. Father, we just thank you. We thank you that no matter what we do, wherever we go, you can use us. Use us for your glory. Use us for your will. Lord, whatever it is, whatever it takes, wherever we go, thank you that you have called us for this. You have shaped us 
for the calling that you have on our lives. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and we'll see you again next Sunday.